Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. Happy to be here, and I'm very happy to, and pleased to be joined by Joy Lee. How are you, Joy? Hello. I'm really well, thank you. Glad to be here live, but also socially distanced from everyone. Together, separate, all that sort of stuff. Um, yes. <laughs> and how, how's, how's everything going? Are you, you still working from home or are you in the studio these days? Uh, we're still working from home most of the days, but we're, in, we're trying to, you know, go get back into things slowly. Yeah. Um, studio is quite small, so we only have, uh, not that many people in the office at one time. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going like once, uh, once a day, wait, no, once a day, once, <laughs> one day per week back in the office, doing it slow. Nice. Oh, that's, that's yeah. very good. Um, so hey everyone in chat, um, RB, Festus, I hope you enjoyed your sandwich. Johanna in the house, thank you for joining us. Malik, great to see you. Miguel, awesome to see uh, some friendly faces in there. Um, I thought uh, just quickly mention today, just quickly bring up our schedule before we start with Joy. Um, this has been the week um, because today we have uh, two live streams today. So here we are at nine o'clock Sydney time with branding and design with Joy Lee, which we're about to kick off. Um, and then we're also back at 11.30 uh, with some impossible isometric illustration. So that three times fast with Bill Hope. Um, so stick around. We've got lots on today and we hope you can join us. Um, but Joy, uh, yes. for those that might not be as familiar with your work as, as some of us are, as I am, um, can you mm -hmm. give us like the, like the, who you are and what you do? Before we well, oh gosh, again, again. <laughs> uh, I guess a bit about me. So uh, I'll probably bring this up at the same time. So I'm a graphic designer and uh, illustrator based in Sydney. Um, for full-time work, I work at a brand and design practice called A Company, which I'll show you a few things that we do um, later on. Um, so with, with me, I also do some work outside of work outside of work is basically 24 seven life <laughs> <laughs> um, that focuses a lot on um, design that kind of intersects between um, things I'm quite passionate about and things that interest me. So whether it's things to do with gender, race or cultural studies, and I do it in a way which um, I feel like that I know how it's almost like an art form for me um, mm. outside of work. Um, and then maybe a good one to show you, as in you can have a look at my website of other things if you're curious about what I do. So I work with um, a lot of different brands, um, but then in particular the one I want to show is actually uh, a personal brand that I did actually well, quite a long time ago during my uni days, mm -hmm. but which has kind of got surprisingly like a lot of attention um, since I put it out just because, I don't know, some people resonated it in some way or thought it was interesting or <laughs> liked how it looked. Um, so I think the, the, what we had to do was create a personal brand for ourselves. And I think at the time, um, what a personal brand w was quite interesting because at that time, did you, do you really know yourself or <laughs> as in like, I didn't even know who I was. The <laughs> designer. you brand yourself when you're still figuring brand? everything out? Exactly. Exactly. Um, but you know, I trudged through and I, I think I turned out with something I quite liked. So I used, um, it was more of a, a, a verbal identity system, I guess, because I didn't really want to lock myself down to any particular design really. Um, and my name's great for puns and I liked puns. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, things that were related to puns. Um, and but I, I did that, this. that hasn't changed still. Into oh, that, puns. that hasn't changed. I'm still. Still, I think all designers are yeah. a, a, a punny. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, this is why we're not copywriters most of the time. So <laughs> uh, I realize that now. Uh, so with, I guess with this one, I chose, um, I think it was, oh, I think it was like eight, eight quotes really from like famous writers and um, well, just not notable people throughout the times um, that have used joy in it. And I kind of wanted to, use that because I'm kind of an, in, I, at the time I thought, oh, I, was, I don't really know myself really. I'm kind of a product and influence of these other artists and authors. And that kind of made me at the time. And then I chose colors that I thought re represented me and then created a, um, a system out of that. And this is just the collateral. So all like different things where it's like, oh, on my invoice, it's like, um, 
give joy, get joy, or ode to joy. <laughs> <laughs> and then other things being in my um, like stickers for packaging would be feel the joy or come on the joy ride. So it's kind of like, oh, now I talk about it. It's a little bit cringe, but it's still, I don't like it. It worked for the time. Um, so, so I think this, that was a good one. Was this done what, like, while, so this is actually done while you were in uni or like yeah, a final was, project or? A... No, this was not a final project. This was, I think, in beginning of my third year of university. So I went right. to uh, UTS. I studied visual communication for those uh, who, who don't really know about my life, I guess. And um Visual communication is just a, I guess not a fancy word for graphic design, but it's <laughs> a, how you communicate visually. But then at the same time, like it's not just visually, it's also in other different ways, like how you, how you, how you write and how you um, present and all that. Mm. Um, I guess to move on to what we do at a company. So we are a brand and design consultancy in Sydney. So we work for a lot of different brands um and uh, and to different um uh, different capacities as well depending on like what they need we create solutions based on um their design problem essentially mm. uh so i just bring up our instagram you can follow us a company dog group <laughs> shout out shout out shout out so we put out uh probably talk about this recent project actually we put out or well, we only released i guess two a few days ago on our Instagram, but it was it's been in the works for quite a while mm. now. Um, it's just unfortunate that during obviously quarantine season, we can't enjoy <laughs> all these nice things mm. that we used to, like going out and having a coffee or all that. But hopefully, yeah. within the new, next few months, or hopefully, we can get back into it. Yeah. Um. So you know, coffee club came to us. Um. They, uh, needing a refresh so we created um you know a whole new logo and system for them um that is translated through you know their product packaging their signage their wayfinding oh no wayfinding is nowhere well it's just the, the signage their um in-store um in-store graphics mm. um, and all the different types of collateral and in this particular situation we partnered with a uh, illustrator to help us do the illustrations which create these kind of, I guess bespoke illustrations for their brand um, and I guess if we go into any of them you can see so for example these illustrations I thought they're so cute and then they <laughs> um, are scattered throughout um, the store in different like in un unexpected like, and delightful ways mm. Um, and we've like <laughs> got in them. Or we went. We got ahead of ourselves and like animated them too, <laughs> which is really cute. Um, and then, okay, anyways, branding wise, <laughs> branding wise. Well, I guess this is an entire brand. It starts from the logo. It goes into how it kind of translates um, in different applications. I guess mm. that's a, a general rundown of what we do, and. We do. Um, I guess with every project, we look at it in a um, in, in in a lens which is like, what is the best solution for this particular company? Yeah. Um, so that's why in the end, like all our <laughs> designs all look very different because each of our companies we work with are very different. Right. So yeah, uh, I guess if you're interested, you can go on to the website or the Instagram just to check out you know, some of our projects and. Um, some of it goes through process and some will just tell you kind of an overview of um, what we did and um, what the client needed. Yeah, amazing. Let's go back to... So <laughs> now to talk about branding basics. Uh, just before we get stuck in, I'll just, oh, give, I'll just yeah. give everyone that quick little rundown of, um, of our kind of timings and everything and what we're up to today, if that's okay. Um, yep. so you'll notice a little, little clock, which I'll start in a second, which is our Q and a break. So that's, um, that's just, if we, 
if we've got lots of questions, we we have somewhere to you know a time set aside for Joy to take somewhat of a <laughs> somewhat of a short break, um, and we can ask ask some of those questions. But at the same time, you can ask questions at any time. Um, just jump over to behance.net slash live. Um, that's where our live chat is. So if you're over on YouTube, jump over to Behance, um, and that's where uh, our chat is, and that's what we're monitoring. And we'll check out. And if you've got any questions at all around branding and design, or around joy as well. Uh, we'll either ask as we're going or if we've got some of those meaning of life questions, what's your favorite color? How do you get to work? All sorts of fun things like that. We can Ooh. we can save those for the, for the Q&A section um, in about 45 minutes or so. <laughs> ask us deepest philosophical questions. Yeah, they're really deep ones for sure. <laughs> yeah, they're really, really... <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can get stuck into my um, little presentation talk that I've prepared for everyone who's That's joining. Great. I love this. Today. I love that you've got like a, you've done a deck for us. <laughs> it's oh, so cool. Gosh, it just feels like I, I guess it's just a habit of mine, or, or maybe just a high anxiety. <laughs> People with high anxiety need to know what's happening at all times. So <laughs> to be in control is to. To, to create a deck, obviously, and prepare and have notes and <laughs> no, and awesome. do all that. Well, it's more so. <laughs> more so, I feel like just you know. professionalism and attention to detail. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so, um, so a little presentation. Felt like I was in uni again, but you know, hopefully, you enjoy We're talking yeah. a bit about the basics of branding. Like I can't encapsulate everything, but hopefully this can give you just a good idea, I, like an understanding about what branding is and some of the things that you might not have thought about if you're not an expert or a professional within that particular field. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so let's talk basics of branding, but make it quarantine themed. <laughs> um, so to talk to you guys about some of the just to talk to you about branding in general, I want to talk about brands. I guess we have to talk about brands. So these brands I've just selected um, have interesting um, design problems to them and how they've been, uh, <laughs> I guess, how they run is quite individual to each other. And quarantine themed, we need to talk about toilet paper. We need to talk about Adobe during this time. Um, you know, Uber Eats and Joe Exotic if you watch Tiger King. <laughs> uh, because it's isolation season. So hopefully you guys can relate in some way. Um, and I guess before we, I guess I get stuck into some of those, um, <laughs> it's one of those things that's ironically when you try to explain a topic that you feel, that you want to explain quite succinctly to everyone in like, I don't know, a nice sentence. It's actually really overwhelming is it's because like when you feel like you're when, when you've become somewhat of like an expert or a professional in that field you realize there's so much you don't know about it and therefore you feel like there's imposter syndrome do i actually know what i'm doing right um this is a really funny curve i don't know if you've seen it but it's like the less you really know about something the more com like overconfident you are because you're like oh because you, you don't know you don't know the, mm. the implications or you don't know any um all that stuff but, you know, the more you gradually know about it, the more, like, not confident you are about it just because you're like, oh, there's actually mm. so much I don't know and the years of experience that other people have that I've only um, had, like, two years of, whereas I'm, in comparison to, you know, my creative director or my senior who has, um, you know, over 10, 20 years of experience. Mm. So I'm, I guess I'm just doing it in a way which hopefully can um, explain my point of view to how I understand branding. Um, and I guess using a framework that I got from um, this, the a quote from American Institute of Graphic Arts, they write, a brand encompasses the look, feel and expectations consumer develop concerning a company and its product. So we'll just use that framework to just think about how S brands um, exist and how they function. All right, we'll go to Kleenex first. <laughs> so, yeah. well, well, let's say Kleenex, I guess. I think you probably would, the first thing you really think is, oh, tissues and toilet paper. Right. But I guess we also need to consider how it looks, how it feels, and how we understand, like, our expectations as consumers to their product. And the way they present themselves tells you a lot about how they want to be consumed, <laughs> mm. pretty much. I think in this case, um, when we talk about design, like design, it can be a finished product in itself, but 
most often or not it's kind of a larger brand like you see one like uh, one box of toilet tissue yes that is a design but to be part of a brand it's part of a larger system and a company identity becomes part of this like larger brand in itself mm. so like you would take this look at would take a look at the tissue box um this tissue like that one singular tissue box there may be part of a larger system in that category of packaging but then that packaging also has to live in a world under the kleenex brand which might also um be producing toilet paper or like wet wipes or I don't know what they might do, what else they might do. Who knows? They might come up with pillows later on <laughs> or something or other. So that kind of has to be like that. And also like in the sense that you look at one piece of advertising, like a, um, a TV commercial, that might be part of a larging, like larger advertising campaign. So even though like that works for that, it also has to make sure that um, kind of it all works under each uh, big umbrella. Um, just, just really um, quickly, Joy. Yeah. I think the mic might be scratching a little bit against your hair. Oh, oh. Hold on a second. Yeah, I think that oh, was it. The, awesome. the woes of the woes of having long hair. Is that better? Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and then in that sense, I guess I'll move on to the next one. There's so much things about branding, which I want to explain all at once, but <laughs> it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. So we'll go, go, go step by step. So hopefully you get like little bits out of it. <clears throat> all right, let's go to Adobe. So I'm going to use Adobe as an example because it's interesting because it's actually quite a, a complex, like a much more complex brand than you probably might initially think. Um, while we know that Adobe is, it's, it is the master brand, it's kind of, um, it has a lot of subsidiaries under it and that fall within this branded ecosystem. So even though, yes, we are uh, um, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, what do you call it, um, interacting with Adobe in a larger scale, like day-to-day -day basis, you might be using InDesign, you might be using Photoshop or mm. um, Illustrator, and each of those components have their own, I guess, unique design in a way, like in terms of mm. like how they are delineated by their icons and the colors. Uh, but at the same time, we have, we understand that this is part of a bigger system that falls under Creative Cloud, which also un then for un which um, then falls under Adobe. Right. And um, I guess in this sense, what I'm trying to say is that like design, a lot of it, it's about problem solving and kind of coming up with design solutions that not only have to work, but also, I, mean, I guess in a way look good too. Mm. <laughs> um, and um, through this process, I guess this is like something that we do a lot um, at work, which is what we call this design development um, and kind of implementing design and putting it into effect. I guess what's important to know is that um, it's it kind of becomes this whole thing becomes this becomes part of something larger, and we need to work with often right. I mean, we work often as part as members of a team, um, and to work with um, other people like the marketing department or the advertising agency or internal teams to come up with these solutions. It's not just oh whatever I think is right will work for this company. Right. Like what? Yes, we are. Um, like obviously, this is the professionals in the field, but also at the same time, because we are working with our clients, um, so we have to work also based on like they also know their company. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and also I guess in, if we look at Adobe again, uh, I want to touch on like Max, for example. If for those who don't know, like Adobe has a conference they do every year. I don't know if it's happening this year, which I'm really sad about. Um, but don't look at me. An... <laughs> no insider like, knowledge. Know. No insider knowledge over here. No I didn't go. I, I didn't. Go. I had the opportunity to go last year, but I, I just, I didn't. Oh, um, to spend. Time you should have went. You should have went. It was and so now good. There, there may not be one this year, and uh, yeah, I have some regrets. Yeah, these are, makes you like think that you just need to. You just need to go for it sometimes because you never know if anything will happen, and then regrets. That's true. Good advice. Where were, yeah. where were you a year ago? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Where was I a year ago? Wait, what's the month? I can't even remember. Oh, is it May? We're May. Or We're at the June? end of May, it's believe May. it or not. Oh, I don't even know. I think all the everything's blended e into each other, so <laughs> I can't even tell where I was. Oh, um, oh where was I? We digress. We're oh, talking Max. about Max as like yeah. separate. We're talking about Max and reminiscing about like good times. The times. <laughs> um, I guess Max in itself has its own branding as well, even though it's um, the master brand, you know, falls under it's an Adobe event. There's still a unique uh, brand. Um, in that and potentially like I don't know what's going on in the back end but it's kind of like the the client might have given more freedom to the um, designers about hey this is a um, creativity conference we need to be creative and right. you can go quite wild in terms of how uh, it looks and has to inspire I guess like there's different jobs that different sorts of designs need to do so for example event like what is it supposed to do who is it for versus um, what do these apps icons supposed to do? What they're supposed to tell? Um, so there's like different ways of um, designing for your particular uh, need. Yeah. So that's that. Exactly. Cool. Um, there was oh, a question actually easy. there. Um, which oh we could yeah. Ask, um, while it was coming up, um, uh, which was Joy, which software do you use the most? Oh, I think I I switch. Well, at work. Well, I guess in anything, the top three that I use is InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. And I think in that order, yeah. Right. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for asking. Uber Eats, something um, that I am Uber Eats. guiltily very familiar of. At <laughs> yeah, so Uber Eats. So I guess this is a, a, another interesting example because it falls under a sub-brand. And it falls under the sub brand of Uber. Um, but at the same time, it does have its distinct brand story, I guess, but it still retains the essence of, mm. like, essence of the master brand and some of the assets that the master brand uses. So we know that, oh, it's actually from this Uber and not some random other company uh, no, in, mm. in, in Europe called Uber. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess if we're talking about like logos, um, themselves like they in of it in itself do represent uh well they kind of become the face of the company but it's only a small part again of the larger thing so when we talk about logos everyone thinks oh what do you do as a designer do you just design logos and then uh, when someone asks that like i almost feel offended You're like no it's not just the logo <laughs> like yes it is the logo but it's kind of a bigger thing than that mm. um so i guess a brand identity should encompass i guess everything the public knows knows and thinks about the company so mm. which like in this case it could be it includes so how you know like oh, what uber eats is you think about their service their reputation their communication and how the company um, um acts and looks not only the the how they present themselves visually mm. and i guess if you think of uber itself like you know brand awareness doesn't just happen overnight like I'm sure it was a long and like carefully planned process um, and I guess like when they define the identity it's you define it in a way which how which they want to communicate and then they consistently communicate that message over their different touch points and how you interact with them and, and what so, about, you talked about everything the public sees what about like internally or to the delivery people or the the stores do you have to think about them in this ecosystem as well oh definitely so definitely in that as well like there's there's also public facing and then um internal facing communications mm. like those don't necessarily look too far different like it obviously depends on the brand like sometimes you know in internal branding might it depends on what it needs to do so for example if it's for an internal conference or an, or, um, I don't know, I can't really on the top of my mind think of what you need internally right now, but something, let's say if it needs to, um, excite, um, excite the employees, like you design things in different ways. Yeah, totally. So, but at the same time you, I guess in, in your mind, you also have to consider like it does still need to like feel like you're part of the brand. It's just to give a different, mm. I guess, serves a different purpose. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, 
Oh, and also with this one, actually, I just remembered, like, there's also different brands that, that need to take into account other brands. So, for example, Uber Eats is actually quite an aggregator for mm. other brands. So, for example, in this case, it re um, houses a lot of different brands like restaurants and cafe brands and um, all that. So, you know, when you open the app, you also see other brands too. But at the same time, mm. it's another design problem that you that I'm assuming they would have considered when they um, see how that plays out. So, for example, on the bottom uh, right here, you can see they've created an ad that is partnered with McDonald's. Right. Yeah, and then how, like, you know, even the logo in this situation, there's so many rules that they've applied, how it looks um, when, you know, another brand is um, in cahoots with them. Cahoots, is that the, is that the <laughs> I couldn't think of another word. I'm like, cahoots. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, when y'all are in cahoots together, this is this is how we exactly. Look. It's great, exactly. Um, next, all right. This one's a bit of a jokey one, but it's just relevant because <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people have watched Tiger King, and you probably wouldn't have really thought about this as a brand, but I guess I mean nowadays with Instagram, with YouTube, and all that, like there's personalities that do arise, and um. Individuals, they in themselves can be a brand. Um, I guess in this sense with Joe Exotic, there's probably not much in a way of like a co like a cohesive visual system, but I guess I can tell, talk to you about the way, uh, an important point that a brand is not necessarily how they have to look in collateral and all that, but also they can be understood in their actions and how they speak and mm. how they present themselves. Right. Um, and I, I guess this talks about a larger story of, oh, um, depending on how you run your company or all that, you'd have brand strategy and um, all that as well to inform what your brand is. So I guess in this case, like, you can think about Joe as there's a, there's a focus to him. You know, he likes wild cats and exotic animals. So you're like, okay, that's my idea of him, what he does. Uh, he tells a story, he talks about his background and how we can understand him to be like how he became like Tiger King. Mm. Um, there's a consistency about him. He's chaotic, <laughs> the stuff he wears, he has a strong dislike for Carol Baskins. Um, he lives his brand essentially and um, also has other people tell his story. And I, <laughs> I guess I just showed a few like aspects of him where he like sells his own merch and has different um, places where we can understand who he is a person through in the store or his YouTube and all that. And he's such an so, interesting character that, you know, it, it, it started this whole documentary series. He's just a fascinating Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm character. not surprised if he doesn't become like a cult or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's just an interesting one to talk about. Like in this sense, I don't like, you know, he can hit us up if he wants designs. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the extent I guess I'll talk about um, Joe. Oh, hey. Um, so more, more fun things for today. Um, just, just a brief, like, what we're going to do um, during this, because it's a two-part series, yes? Yes. Uh, first part, uh, so, yes, yeah, so the first part is today. Um, I will be going through, well, I'll be creating a brief, well, I've created a brief for myself. Um, essentially, I'll probably be just talking through my, like a like a like a watered down version of my design process because if I could, if I could you know explain branding to everyone you know, within one hour I'd be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's kind of like oh it's a, it's a general you know how I get my inspiration how I do research if I get a brief how do I distill it um, come up with a few logo concepts you know, do some do some logo designing and hopefully you guys can help me as well and then come up with a few brand assets. And then in part two, this is where we take these brand assets and implement them and see if they work. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. Um, and I guess we can get started okay, on that. Cool. I'll let you know as well. This, have, just, until yeah, your hair is um, oh, jumping Again, jump again. Sorry. Down. Sorry. Oh, okay. Is that better? Yeah, for sure. Okay, perfect. Okay. Oh my gosh. We are we're crossing. We 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 <laughs> we've made it to that point now where <laughs> I've turned my I've turned my hobbies into my job. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I want to be in life. 
So for the brief um, that I set for myself, I just thought, why not, you know? Um, for those who don't know <laughs> about Animal Crossing, um, I guess I guess you're either going to laugh or like, be confused at what's happening. Um, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing these last like, six weeks. It's a video game which essentially you live on this deserted island. You, you can build a house. Um, you interact with your like cute villager neighbors, chop trees, or animal villager, or anthropomorphic animal villagers. Right. Chop trees, go fishing, uh, catch bugs, pay your raccoon landlord and accrue a lot of debt. <laughs> but it's really fun. It's really fun. Trust me. It sounds like, oh, that's a lot of chores, but actually surprisingly com- like comforting during this time. Mm. Um, and I think, and it'd just be a, a perfect opportunity to use my clearly essential skills to teach branding through <laughs> Animal Crossing. Um, and, and, and yeah, so let's, let's just use that as a brief. <laughs> Um, to go into that, like what's the first thing I'd do essentially if once I, well not the first thing I'd do after I get a brief, but this is one of the things I do when I get a brief, is to research existing brands or existing things that um, are of the same category. Um, and in this case I researched um, fictional places that people have created a brand for, um, and some of these are from just TV and um, movie show, or just mm-hmm. movies. So examples, grand, like the the Grand Budapest, the State of Zubrokam, um, Handmaid's Tale, you know, the Republic of Gilead, and then Hunger Games, Pan, Pan Am City. Mm. Um, and what's really interesting when I put these three together, like, I don't know if you guys can see it or it's just me, but they all essentially look like they yeah. could be in the same um, city, but just different visual interpretations of that. Yeah. Which is a little bit like, oh, disconcerting. But I guess <laughs> if you think about potentially they've mapped it off the, I don't know, the autocratic governmental system that's in their, um, in yeah, their totally, world. Totally. I'll, I'll just mention we've got some Animal Crossing fans in chat, by the way, who are, oh, very, who are, very, exci- who are very excited um, <laughs> that, we'll, that we'll be doing this um, and using this as our brief. Uh, virtual uh, oh. Melody said, virtual real estate branding identity project. Love it. So yes. yeah, <laughs> great, I think we've great, got great. Some, some fans in, in chat. So that's cool. This is going to be a great. lot of fun. Um, and you're Yay, right. These, yeah. these look these look so similar. It's the first thing. As soon as they popped up, I was like, oh, eagle, 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 circle, badge. Like, like the way circle, that it's red, red, circle, red. Circle, circle, red, yeah. red. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, this is insane. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting. It's interesting to see that. And again, it tells you a lot about probably the time and place that this particular um, movie or TV show set in and what's the vibe that they're trying to give. Mm. Um, and then to go into, I guess, one of them as an example, like I looked at, uh, so for example, in the Great Grand Budapest, the state of Zubroka, which was the state that I guess this um, was set, the film was set in, um, by the graphic designer for movies, Annie Atkins. I heard her speak when I was in Max. Uh, last year or the year before, either one, and I was really like inspired by her craft. I've always been following last her year, work I didn't for a long get to time. Go. I still haven't seen a talk. Yeah. Oh, sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, still reminiscing. Um, yeah. She's an amazing then, designer. So, um, definitely. Check yeah. Out chat crazy. If you're not familiar with familiar with Annie Atkins, she has like the best job in the world. I know. So jealous. But then at the same time, you listen to her, and I realize, oh, it's actually it's 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 painstaking too, just because. Right. There's just so many things that you also need to consider in film that I don't obviously consider in my job and then Mm. vice versa, I guess. Mm. So in this one, I just found a few examples of how she took that symbol and has translated it through different applications um, and different collateral. So in in the sense, um, what this particular country needed was currency. So you could see, you know, the Eagle logo on this currency, um, there's passports, there's stamps, police reports, um, and how it kind of is spread out in these all these different aspects, but then at the same time they look cohesive mm. and tells you um, a little bit about this particular place. Definitely. Um, so that one's interesting, and that's something that I um, uh, I was just really drawn to, and I just thought, oh, this could be a good source of inspiration and um, inspiration essentially. Cool. Uh, so the next. 
one I looked at, like to compare something fictional, but also to something real. Um, there's this example of an actual brand identity that was a newly formed neighborhood in downtown San Francisco that they called the East Cut. So it was named and designed by this company called Collins in America. Um, although like it's so in the way, like we'll just kind of explain a little bit about how, how, how it works in their case, like even just as a visual <laughs> exploration of how I'd mm. see this. Um, interesting because like this is, um, although like this graphic identity kind of uses the forms and colors and type in quite a modern way. Um, I was reading into it and, but the area is actually quite distinctly, um, like I was going to say hysterical, historical, <laughs> <laughs> historical. So there's a lot of history behind it, but they've wanted to like create a modern, like a modern, a more modern looking brand. Mm. Um, to it Um, and I guess in this sense you can see that from the logo itself the one on the top left um, it's quite logo centric in the sense that it's built out um, in a few different ideas and how it is translated over all the different collateral Mm. I guess I think the concept I was reading it says uh, it was quite simple like there's three there's three distinct areas or something in that um in that neighborhood that they've combined together in these like three rectangular blocks but then at the same time it the way it's arranged you know that it looks also like an e so which mm. they wanted to form the east cut which was the e in the east i'm assuming um and then uh, with the colors as well it was quite interesting because it's it's something that there's actually so much color in this and it's quite um vibrant and modern and in a way like speaks to potentially like the the diversity that is in this particular neighborhood or this region, mm. um, maybe the different communities. Um, I don't know. That's what I, that's what I take from it, and that's how I've um, interpreted that. Mm. And also with the typography as well. Um, you know, they they've tried to do things in playful ways, but also at the same time um, is quite structured. So this is just an interesting um, real life example. Cool. And okay, <laughs> let's get into it. <laughs> so is, my is island is called Joyland. From, from your game. <laughs> this this may be a stream grab. Like I, I was thinking, oh maybe I should do like a live game playthrough. But then I was thinking, oh actually no, that it would just be me playing Animal Crossing for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people would enjoy that. <laughs> Yeah, probably, probably. But, you know, also at the same time, design. <laughs> right. We should do the design part right. too. Yeah, good I point. should do good the design. Point. Yeah, good point. Um, look, this is probably not the most original name, but look. <laughs> uh, Joyland, it says a lot. <laughs> yeah, when you've got um, a name like, like it... <laughs> Joy and you're very positive as well and it's a happy, fun, like, um, like brand to work on, like, why not? Let's let's do it. Like, double down. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, as in for this, it's not it's not going to be like as serious. Like, and it's also probably not going to be as complex as the East Cut or um, Annie Atkins. But it kind of mm. takes from that. It's, it's probably also a bit indulgent because the client is pretty much me because I'm the emperor of this island. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna like I just need to satisfy myself in this case and I guess my villagers. Right. All right. So these are just like the hard facts on my island just to help me get inspiration and source material to reference and things that I can like draw from to um, kind of inform what I'm going to design mm-hmm. or like concepts that I come up with. So I've got a native fruit, which is the apple. Uh, my native flower is a lily. I think I have another one, but I forgot, but the lily is the one I like. We've got the employees. So the employees, I think every island, every island's got the same employees, but you know, they're the cornerstone of my mm-hmm that keep my economy running besides me. Right. <laughs> and then um, each island gets individual villages and these are the villages that I have. I was really lucky, oh, this is a sidetrack. I was really lucky to actually have Raymond. Like, I think people have been like raving about Raymond. <laughs> Which one's Raymond? And I'm like, what's the, the cat? The cat right. with the two, the, different, the business cat. He looks a little bit snooty. Oh, uh, I don't know. If, I don't. Maybe he is. I'm, I'm not sure his like characteristics, but mm. he's just hardline like business cat. Okay. Like he just talks about marketing. He talks about his personal brand and all that. But maybe that's why people like him. Mm. 
Okay. And his like whole like house is decked out in like office. He looks yeah. like he would live in like a nice house. Yeah, I think he does. Like he lives at work. Right. <laughs> can relate. <laughs> um, can relate. <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made these up, but these are things that you know. I when we go into like we do this for a client, I guess. Like there's usually like an immersion stage where we involve um, other stakeholders or the people that are involved in the company. So in this case. Maybe it's good to hear out what the villagers are saying about my island so it can allow me to like reflect and understand more about it and design an identity that reflects this. Okay. So, you know, they say it's edgy, there's good vibes, there's a lot of trees, maybe too many. Um, it's progressive but structured. We're business and play. Mm. Uh, tasty apples and we love our emperor. So it's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing to work from. So I know, okay, I want, I want something a bit more modern maybe. Right. But also fun. <laughs> I like edgy and um, good vibes. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 what it's what Joyland stands for. Wow. Um, and then we can start now. I can move on to actually the design. How much time do we have for Q and A? Oh yeah, so we've got twenty minutes. That's cool. We can start right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let me get my. Illustrator up. Okay, so look, there's a few things that I've prepared earlier just in terms of otherwise I'll be sketching all day. Right, okay, cool. Um, so how I, normally how we start when we move into a concept, um, we sketch, we sketch. Like there's going to be things that don't necessarily look very good. Like we see the final outcome, it's all very polished and very nice and sleek. But then the, in the back end of things, it's a mess. Like today is right. going to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's things that, you know, they just might look like trash later on just because in the end it's like you design 12 things, but maybe, maybe the client only likes one thing or maybe you only like three things. And then, and then after the three things you show the client, they choose one thing. So mm -hmm. then you'd never get to see the 11 other things that, um, we've come up with. So usually it's kind of like a behind the scenes of all the trash you might see that goes on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> is this all physical sketch like is it in a sketchbook or on paper yeah this is so like so how i've done it is i sketched it um i usually like to sketch in uh in physical form just because i'm less precious about things and how they look so if i have an idea i just sketch it out and if it looks bad well it just looks bad no one's gonna see it <laughs> um and then you just keep sketching and sketching and i think there's more for me there's more control i guess in that way but then I afterwards to actually put that on a computer, I either scan it in or somehow translate it, I guess, through mm. um, as a reference source. Um, so these are scans. So I've, I've just scanned these in for everyone just to have a look. Um, and I guess just to talk through like some of the things that I was thinking, like, cause at the moment this is a mess. Like <laughs> some people draw night, like much neater than me, but how I normally think is I start off with one thing, it can be really bad. Usually you have to get the bad stuff out first before you can get all the good stuff. That's what we say all the time in the studio. So, you know, we don't judge each other for like some of the <laughs> horrific stuff. But <laughs> um, yeah, so we draw things and things, some things might have legs, some things might not. Um, the good thing is that when you are on a team, a lot of people, I mean, you get, you get, critique from other people and their thoughts as well. Like I might see something in a drawing that someone else drew, but they didn't see it in that way originally. And another idea might like stem from that, which is like really good mm. because it's such a collaborative process. So when you are collaborating um, like in the team and there's, and there's mm -hmm. a brief, would you, would you like, um, this stage, would you like sort of, sort of separate, so to, so to say, and then like kind of spend a bit of time sketching and exploring and then kind of come back together and collaborate from there or you kind of sketching side by side or, or how's that process in the studio like well it, i think it depends sometimes we change it up like usually usually how we do it is you know we get the brief we think about it or we'll go through all that the front end stuff and then um and then then we move on into yeah some we we do it individually we think of ideas and all that but then we all share and present those to each other and then you know, where ideas might um, come up, like we think, oh, you know, something might be stronger. There's some, I, there's something in this is a potential to, you know, be a, be a more exciting thing. Or we combine ideas. We're like, oh, this is some, 
like, you know, this is the idea that I have, but then how they've executed might, might not be your idea per se, but mm. it actually works together and then like create something more interesting. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, but I think in this, in this situation, I guess the different brands that we do, the again, need to do different things. Like in, in this situation, I think I'm going to be create, I'll be creating a, uh, a logo mask, so an icon, and then I'll probably tack it on with a, <laughs> a, um, a word mark. But then in other situations, they can kind of, I don't know, Brandy, it's, it's just a whole like big, big, like a very wide encompassing thing. They can, brands can do so many different things. There's like rules, but then at the same time, also you can break those rules in a way. Nice. So it's actually quite like complex, I guess. Um, okay, with some of these ideas, how do I explain these to, to you guys? Um, in this case, well, I started thinking about, you know, my island. So my island's got apples, it's got lilies. Um, thinking about, you know, how Annie Atkins and the other film people, the, fi the film references that I've got, they took a, an aspect of um, potentially, you know, they might have eagles in that place, I'm assuming. Right. <laughs> Or it stands for strength or something. Or I'm going to say, well, my island has apples. Let's use apples hmm. as the as a as a main like source of reference. So I started to do that, but then at the same time, I was thinking Joyland, Joyland, Joyland. Oh, it can it's kind of like uh, it can be a mon uh, I think what do you call it? like a monogram in itself using the JL, and I'll think, oh, my last name Joy Lee, JL. Oh, this is this is perfect. Right. <laughs> to revisit like. Monograph. Who knows? I might use this for a, my own brand later on. Mm. Um, I like that. The J, so the J can, and the L, obviously, like the J and really the L. Well, like next week. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So you start like you know, I start sketching like some things. You're like, what is that? What does it even look like? like what I don't understand. Um, but it's it's just me sketching my ideas out. Um, I start with apples, but then also at the same time I like start combining it. How do I make this apple look like a JL, but still also look like an apple, but then also make it look edgy? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, oh yeah, there's something interesting in like these these legs, these feet. They're kind of cute. Can they? Can they? You know, can they do something? Can they be dynamic? I don't know. And it looks like a J and an L. Mm. Um, for Joyland, that's potential. But then I'm like, it kind of looks weird. Um, then I moved to do something a bit more, is it, is it a little bit more, maybe edgy is not the right word, but, you know, a little bit more, I don't know the word for it, sharper, I guess. Right. It looks a bit more sharp. That's, um, that's your edgy right there. Yeah, that's my edgy, that's my edgy. But create something maybe a little bit more, um, unique, something, I don't know, a new, a new, a new form. So I know it's a new island. Like you're kind of going in different territories or directions like you're sort of going down one path and then you, you're sort of going okay i've explored that enough now let's like approach it in a completely different way rather than kind of going j and l okay cool that works let's continue down this path like do you have to stop yourself from going oh cool i've nailed it like i'm gonna do do that or like how, that, how <laughs> well does that actually it's interesting you say that because um in the end we're all it's all time and money right like in, in yeah. you know um when you're at work but so that's why you, you do have time limits to time yourself. So mm. if I need to do something in a day, well, it's like, well, I'll, I'll give myself this amount of time to come up with the concepts um, and then see where it goes from there. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah, I can see spending years on something. And I think people, <laughs> right. like, they, they might. They might spend years on something until they reach, you know, the, there are logos out there which probably are years and years in the process and you just don't know. You just thought, oh, mm. they released it now. They probably did it recently. So it's not like that. So for me, I think I gave myself a time limit and just, just scribbled and just drew anything as I could, everything and anything, and see where those ideas come from. Um, and I guess in this sense, because it's my own brief, it, it can be harder in a way because you're the one trying to solve your own problem, but then you're like, what is my problem? <laughs> it's just a design a uh, solution <laughs> for my island. <laughs> you can be so it's definitely what I like. like most difficult client. Um, yeah, you got to try sure. not to like stay in your head of like stop trying to present it to yourself as you're designing it. Like you're kind of switching from designer to to like 
client, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like so that, doing yeah. your own website and doing your own logo or branding or identifying yourself can be so difficult sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Because you, 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 you tend to distance yourself from your outcome that you present to the client, client just mm. because you're confident in it, you're like, it does the job um, and you present it in that way. So there is a distance, you're not that precious about it. And I guess in this mm. sense, it is also part of the process. You can't be too precious about your work like sometimes you're like this is a great idea but you just can't if you just can't execute it and if, if it doesn't look like what you imagined it well then just scrap it because yeah. you're going to spend years and years or days and days on it and sorry to mention again but just your i think your hair's oh, scratching the mic just sorry just keep mentioning <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's all right um okay so this this other one that so that, yeah that was the edgy one the bit more like obscure one maybe that's something i can go down and then I had this thought, I was like, oh, because I went back to that Apple idea. I was like, there's something in that Apple, but I don't really need, don't, don't want it to really like look really like an Apple. How can I do it in a way which is create something a bit more like a unique symbol in a way which, you know, you haven't, it's probably not out there, but also kind of stems from something. Mm. Um, I guess you can kind of see it here. Like this is where I kind of went back. I was like, okay, look at the shape of an apple. Put it in a box. Uh, it looks kind of weird. Oh, like it doesn't really say much. And then I was like, okay, move it, move it, move it. Can I make it out of shapes? Um, oval, ovals, like flip it. Um, you know, does it look like an inside of an apple? Does that really say anything? Not really. Go back to this idea of the the segmented apple. Oh, it kind of looks like a JNL. Um, and then I move it on. Oh, what happens if I slant it? Makes it look edgy. <laughs> 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 and then and then I translated it over here. I'm like, oh, can I like just do it in a different way? Is it through like more um, tubular forms? But I'm like, oh, that kind of loses the apple like look. And I'm like, oh, is it something like this? I don't know. It's a bit. It's quite simple. I don't know. It gets to the point. JL looks like an app, like a abstract apple. It says what it needs to. <laughs> I like okay. that. So I just marked a dot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then sometimes I like go off completely um, into a different space because also when I'm an illustrator, I also think a little bit more graphically. <laughs> I looked at the lily. I was like, oh, oh, what does the lily look like? I drew some lilies just to get myself some inspired. And then, and then like amplif like just morphed it into some like, monster down here I'm like okay this is not working <laughs> and then simplified it a little bit and i'm like oh yeah and this also kind of looks like a jnl but it's just a lily if it's just nice it's just like the symbol of the island like if you go to my island you'll see a lot of lilies so maybe this is like something that it could um go into but i'm not that sure like it, the edginess isn't there it's a bit too like pretty and floral and that's not my island it's just a little bit more gritty and yeah, a bit rough around the edges sometimes. <laughs> still, still working on it. Um, and then afterwards, I was just thinking, look, if it's something new, if it's a new place, like let's just take it as an experiment of just designing something a little bit more out there. Maybe this can like translate into something that isn't necessarily just a symbol for my country. It can change. You know, if mm. it uh, brands don't necessarily have to be. Um, um, defined by one particular symbol, it can be defined by multiple. If you have more of a dynamic system in as your as your brand, I can't really think of one right now. This is bad, but you know there are different brands which have multiple different logos and they're used in different circumstances. But at the same time, you can still understand um, that's the brand. Yeah. Um, and in this case, I took it as an exercise of um, using the JNL and almost a 36 days of type style to design weird and funky right. um, um, funky letters mm. so just a quick drawing of a lot of them and I actually like when I drew a lot of them I'm like okay this is just a bit too a bit too wild and I was like pair it down pair it a bit down and do you, do, um, and then do you I got like into... you need to go wild like in at this stage like push it like to a ridiculous kind of level and then, and I then think definitely, back. definitely. Like if you think about, um, just think about your wildest ideas and just put them down. And sometimes mm. you're like, oh, it might be too, but might be too extreme. But sometimes it might not be extreme enough, and that's when like a, another person's perspective helps a lot in this sense. Mm. Sometimes you you're like, okay, you know what will work, but sometimes you think, oh, actually, if I can push it a little bit more and um, 
I don't know, push it out there to see what it could potentially be. It might be a better solution to what you think might actually, uh, like you, you're tried and tested essentially. So yeah. go out there um, and then test it. And then, but the hard part is sometimes the things that are really, really exciting to you that you're like, this is really, really new might not, um, might not fly with the client because they're like, this is weird. I've never seen it before. I don't know about this. Let's go back to, mm. or, you know, can we do something else? So that's why a lot of the time you, you can't really judge something that's come out of coming into the world based on um, these ideas because in the end it's a lot of it's the clients. Um, it's up to the client because yeah. we, we like to push things, but sometimes they're like, oh, this is too new <laughs> yeah, totally. for us. And um, but, what, would, what would Raymond think as well? We need to keep Raymond in mind. Exactly. He's a hard line, like, businessman. So he needs something that is business, but also play. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I looked into something actually a bit more structural. And because I have a lot of stairs in my island and a lot mm-hmm. of, like, structures. I thought, oh, this would be actually a fun thing to do with um, looking at different forms. Um, kind of like the east cut a little bit using those shapes um, to, to delineate the different aspects of my different like architectural art aspects of my um, island so that's a potential and also it's something that I can actually because sometimes you think about it you have to know like oh I can actually make it as well like I have you can have lofty ideas but you're like oh let's do something in 3d that moves like this and mm. uh, I don't know like it's based on code but if you don't know how to code like yourself, like in this case, I'm like, well, I can't really code anything. Right. Um, I have to use also my knowledge and understanding of what I can actually make uh, to show you guys. Mm, cool. um, so that one was a potential. And then I went to these clouds, which I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, and then there's these other two that could be more dynamic in the sense that if it's just, if it's using the word mark and doing them in fun configurations um, or of a more a blocky system where it kind of shows like oh uh, um, kind of to, to show like you know the different houses and uh, mm. just to have that feeling I guess these are just so just things to stem from um, I guess I can just start I don't know, making some stuff how much time we're four minutes before q and right I guess we can start making or designing afterwards or um, yeah we can, I mean, we can do Q&A now. Oh, yeah, we can do Q&A now. Like I set, think before separate, I get stuck into it. and then, yeah. All right, so oh. um, so chat, so let us know. We'll, we'll take a couple of questions now and then we'll get kind of into the design side of things. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, the chat that we're talking about is over at behance.net slash live. So jump in there to ask your questions. That's the chat that we're monitoring live. Um, there was a question around Lucas and we're going to get stuck into this very soon, but which is, um, mm-hmm. which would you prefer for logo design, Illustrator or Photoshop? So that's a question for you, Joy. Definitely Illustrator. Definitely. So why is that? Definitely. Just because, um, it's just good practice to use Illustrator and also with Illustrator. Um, well, again, I, you probably could use Photoshop, but I <laughs> personally, I would use Illustrator just because, mm-hmm. Um, of what it's, I guess, there for, um, the function of creating, vec- it's, it's a vector graphic software. So vector graphics are different from raster graphics. I think that's what it is. Oh my God. I'm just like, oh, I'm being tested now. This is like a real test from thinking about <laughs> <laughs> my uni days. Um, so vector graphics are based on also how they, how images in, um, Illustrator correct, color, uh, created are like through algorithms. So it's really strange. Like all the lines that you draw, they're actually very algorithmic. So um, the reason why we have vectors is that it can be scaled at any size and it wouldn't lose the crispness or quality just because all the the lines that are created are uh, based on algorithms of like, Mm. I don't know, whatever that line is. And that line will be created at any size. Whereas if you make it in Photoshop and if you create it as a pixel, pixel-based pixel artwork, it is only going to be that size. So for example, if you made like one that's a 2000, 2000 pixel um, logo, if you want to blow that up on a truck, it's going to be very pixelated. Or like I'm assuming it's going to be very pixelated just because like of the sizing um, shrinkages. So... Um, 
that's just one of the reasons why mm. I use Illustrator and also just in professional practice, that's, um, that's the convention. Uh, hopefully I have that right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I know that I have that right. But, um, and I think at the same time, like it's, there's precision with, um, I guess your tools, um, and also, what else? What's another reason why would I use Illustrator? Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's mainly because of the whole vector function and right. so that you can scale the logo yeah. at different sizes. Cool. Um, so there was a question around, do you find inspiration from movies, etc., for your personal work, perhaps even client work? Or do you usually find I'm... inspiration from movies? I guess because we were looking at, oh. they, were all, they all happen to be movies. Is that They all like happen to be movies. Or... Okay. Well, I think in, I guess in this circumstance, I was basing off movies and TVs just because I was thinking where, where would it be fictional? Like, where can I actually see a physical manifestation of a brand in a physical form? But it, that is fictional. So the first thing I went to was, um, movies and TV, but yep. not necessarily all of the time. I think it's, uh, based on what you're trying to look for. Um, and I think inspiration can come from anywhere. Like you can look through history, you can look through, um, well, it's kind of like through anything like in nature and science in art. Um, I usually think the weirder you get weirder places, you get the inspiration from the more unique your design might be. Mm. So for example, the, what I realize like when we look at too many pin, like too many things on Pinterest or things that have been already designed like on Instagram, you end up taking too much inspiration from that and then your work might be a version, another version of that. So sometimes this is why like trends start to happen because things just start looking the same, same, same. Whereas right. say for example, you randomly were interested in like a weird like niche in, I don't know, science and you were inspired by the bones of these dinosaurs. <laughs> Um, you might come up with a more unique approach to right. your solution. So like, but not necessarily. Yeah. The takeaway could be, um, like, like obviously looking at other designers and looking at other design work that's out there, like digital and otherwise, but also mm. try, you know, in, in, in the quest for uniqueness, like trying to find inspiration from, from other places, like, you know, the physical world around us or a, a di completely different field, exactly, digging, up, exactly. digging up dinosaur bones, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally <laughs> and I think also another do. interesting um, another interesting point is that you don't necessarily have to look at so that's just a visual inspiration point of view, but mm -hmm. also in terms of you can look for inspiration. Also, a lot of my personal work is um, a lot of so the inspiration from that comes from my own personal experiences and whether that's like culture or my experiences of 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 I don't know be being Asian Australian or a woman or that it can, come, it can stem from that as well. Yeah. So that gives you more of a um, unique point of view and something that is, I guess, uniquely yours. Mm. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Um, we'll take a couple more questions. There's a great question from Rosie. I really like this question. Um, if the client is unsure about their brand identity or the illustration they want, what questions can you ask your client to get a better understanding of their vision? Oh, that's a tough, tough Ooh. question, <laughs> but a great question. So thank you. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Um, something, so, something that we always say uh, in the office is that like our, our job, yes, is to help people, but then at the same time, like even like we're icing a cake, right? <laughs> so using that analogy, we're icing a cake, um, and we can make that as beautiful um, as that is, and to present it beautifully into the world. But if the cake doesn't have substance or content, it's not going to be a good cake because you're going to start cutting it open and trying to eat it and be like, "What is this? There's nothing in this cake," even though it looks beautiful. So I guess the how I'm relating that to, I guess what you're saying is that if they don't know what they want, it's obviously hard for you to design for design for that. Um, and then questions, questions you can ask. Oh, I think that's hard because it's very circumstantial and based on what sort of client they are, what they're looking for is, are they, a, are they a business? Are they, um, are they doing this for, uh, it just depends on what, I guess what the, their brief is. 
Yeah. Sorry, what was the question again? I totally don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. So if, so if the client yeah. is unsure about like basically what they want, um, you know, what can you, what questions can you ask? Or I can widen the question as well. Like what could you, what can you do um, to try to get a better understanding of, of their vision? Oh, I think it's just hard because like at work, imagine like someone coming to you and be like, uh, I mean, I guess in this case it'll be like, yeah, I need a rebrand. But then if they're, rebrand they don't know what they want for their company like as in we can't exactly tell them what they want in a way we can maybe help them like prime them with questions like um um you know what's the purpose of your brand or you know why are you doing this what is your or who is your audience um what is your long-term goal like what's the outcome are you trying to sell the product are you trying to sell yourself are you trying to like so just all those questions that help you get more information mm. about that and will help you answer obviously their design problem so it's just hard if they don't have like they have a general problem but then you kind of need a little bit more information on why they want yeah. the, why they've approached you to do it as well and what okay. all the, what the content is okay cool. i don't know Great. if that helps but i think that's like the best way of explaining that. yeah and like a lot of this stuff there's probably like you know open a box once we answer that question then there's another exactly another, there's there'll be more things very complex mm. um ec said thanks joy now i feel like cake me too um <laughs> <laughs> um maybe i'll limit this question to two but like um okay. who is your who is your favorite designer um that you look up to so maybe one or two we actually mentioned annie atkins before i'm not saying that not putting words in your mouth but she's an amazing designer yeah you, you, you oh but I, yeah no annie atkins is definitely high up there just because of um the unique field she is in and then like how the sense of like i don't know it's just something so so beautiful and her craft is so amazing that i really look up to her so yeah she is one um oh that's really hard because I mean, if we're talking about like individual designers, well, I think it's hard because I don't have like a favorite color, I don't have a favorite food because it's like, why do I limit myself to one favorite thing when I right. can have so many different great good things in my life? Um, but uh, just to think back, like I think, I guess I think everyone really says, not everyone, but a lot of people do say Sagmeister, but I think about, I listened to one of his talks last Stefan, year. So this is Stefan Still, yeah, Sagmeister. Stefan Sagmeister last year i heard him speak at max about he was talking about um beauty so i guess the interesting point about why there is a there is some um part that i really admire about um his work well the work that he does now is just mostly because it's self-initiated work because he's decided to take multiple sabbaticals and like research design and how they in in a more like um i guess a research-based level to make us think almost like a philosophical level as well to make us really think about and consider how design affects um our daily uh, like our, our daily experiences mm. um and it kind of moves kind of beyond design for um corporations or clients but it's almost like design as something that is more holistic and um is a bigger part of your life, I guess. Yeah. So I guess Thanks. that's those things that really like inspire me and um, that I really like seek and crave. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, thanks for the questions, guys. I want to make sure that we give Joy enough time to jump into the design part as well. So oh, yeah. we might jump into we might jump in there, and if we do have any more time, might address some of some of the other questions that came through. Um, but otherwise, let's let's switch back. What do you say? Uh, okay. All right. We are back in Illustrator. Um, let's see. What do I feel like designing? Uh, I think there's some... Oh, sorry. Some... Just your hair again. Sorry. Yeah. Just to oh. mention that. Uh, keep, keep telling. Keep reminding me. If it we'll get a hair down. tie for next week or something. Or... Actually, no. I do have a hair tie right here. Oh, just you do? Keep it... uh, awesome. I, just keep it with me. I should just... Oh, why did I not think about that? <laughs> okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right. So I think... Which ones? I think I need to get get some of the ideas that might not be that good out there first, just to get it mm -hmm. out of the way and out of my system. Um, I think I might start with <laughs> the idea with legs. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the legs, and before you were mentioning yeah. when you show when you're collaborating with somebody else, they might see yeah. something you don't. Because I didn't see legs; I saw you an didn't island. See legs. 
I saw oh. like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, like little mountains, like almost like Yoshi's Island or like Super oh. Mario kind of really thick. Yeah, exactly. Thing. So it's, it's, exactly. Well, it's, you know, yeah, that's interesting because it's like, oh, so to one person it might look like um, one thing, but another person might look at it and be like, it's something else. But then that's, I think, the beauty of it too. Like in the end, sometimes you see logos and you think, what is that? Or some people might see <laughs> this one thing as something someone might, like that's not what it's intended for. Mm. But like does that really matter? Because in the end we also consider that, right? Because um, if we do logo testing, we show a lot of different um, people the logos, and then they might see that one thing, but um, but then other things might come up, and then we consider, oh, someone sees a happy face, someone sees mm. um, something else, and like it, as long as it's not that negative, I guess, and we're like, oh, it's good connotations, then um, you'd be like, well, it's actually. A, a benefit to you because it's like oh if you see an island that's great because i'm designing an island like yeah. for an island <laughs> have you ever done a logo or something like that and then um or, you know and someone sort of said oh wow cool oh yeah there's a, a really cool interesting like trick in here and you're like yeah i totally totally meant to do that <laughs> oh yeah um we call that like um what do we call it it's like the fedex logo right but it's not really that but it is like something that um you uh, what's it called? I forgot what the word's called, but it's kind of like a, um, oh, what's the word? It's, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift. So a the gift. word FedEx. When, <laughs> so those who don't know, if you look up FedEx, you know, there's an arrow inside the, the E and the X, I think. Wait, is it? I don't know. But there was an arrow in there somewhere, like a, yeah. a hidden arrow. Um, but that only works is because because of the name FedEx. Like if the name wasn't FedEx, then mm. um, it's not gonna work. So we just call that a gift. I like it. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't work out and you're like, well, either do I give up or do I, like there's, there's some things when you're, like, you're trying really, really hard and then you just might, it just might not happen. Mm. Um, again, like what I normally do for logos is again, not precious, do them really quickly first. And then if I see some potential in it, then I refine it. So in the end, you're like, okay, well, some of the proportions don't look right, but I'm just trying to get the idea across. Like, does it work? Does it look like anything? Is it, is it ugly? <laughs> is it beautiful? <laughs> does it need more work? And then you go into more refining. So in this case, I'm like, well, could it be something that's, I don't know, moving? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Do I like it? Not really. It's fine. So don't spend too much time if you, you're not really that mm. keen on it. But you can, again, revisit it later. Um, and you're, so, Well, that's that for that one. Um, maybe, maybe there's something also... I could try, I'll come to this one later because I feel like there is something in that one and I can execute it. I just need to come up with ideas for other ones. All right, let's try this one. So in this case, I'd probably be just tracing this. Mm -hmm. So there's some of them where if they're made of block shapes, you can kind of tell, okay, I can just make them geometrically through shapes and then I might actually come up with a better... Um, better outcome than if I was to trace them all. But then right. in other situations where it's where it's a bit more um, unique looking, it's better to get the tracing tool out. So I'm just using a pen tool. I'm just working on two layers. So one of the layers is just the actual reference and then the other one I'm actually drawing on. So it's just easier for me to switch it on and off. Yeah. And have you dropped the tra 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 transparency down a little bit there? Words oh on. yes, I have. Yeah. So transparency, just I just double, yeah, I just double clicked it, and then let's just dim the image. Because if I don't dim it, it's just super dark and you can't really yeah. tell where you're drawing. Cool. Oh, I'm actually like not the best at. <laughs> you know that you have to strengthen certain things, mm -hmm. um, but you end up just practicing more and more to be more skilled at. I don't know drawing logos or. Uh, choosing colors or um, that sort of stuff. I'm not the best at tracing or 
doing logos, but I'm much more known for my like color combinations and mm. all that during our work time. So we have different strengths. Oh, you can see that this is not working. Mm. Um, just a tip for like, for doing these, um, uh, what's this called? Tracing and finding like the best, um, I guess points is to, you want as le like less points as possible, I guess, just so right. you can have like a smoother curve. And where I do the curve is usually at the axis where things kind of start shifting. Again, like I don't know if that's best practice, but this is how I do it and I can see um, how I get it. Again, this is not perfect. This is just a general idea of what that shape looks like and then you refine it later mm. if you think it looks any good. Yeah, so at this stage, you probably don't want to spend like a lot of time getting it, trying to no, make it perfect. Exactly. You're just trying to have a quick look at what it might look like, you know, in a digital version, like the next stage from a sketch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's okay just to be quite quick about it. Mm. So I guess like going back to the point of um, using Illustrator for logos, the good thing is, again, with the whole vector system, if you drew that in if you like actually painted that, for example, on Photoshop or made that without the, um, the whole vector system, you're only going to be able to have that size. If you all of a sudden want this size, you can't have that without losing the pixel quality. So if I zoom in, it's super crisp. Like there's no pixels essentially. And that's just that. Oh, interesting. It's all right. It's a bit like a bit, a bit Japanesey, which I'm like, ah, oh, okay, not sure. Um, if I move on to, I think there's something. I think there is more in this space, but then also at the same time, there's also some. I don't know. There's something weird in this top one up mm. here. You're like, oh, I don't know what that is, but potentially. So something particular that you might kind of, you kind of like about it. There's something. There's an idea there. Yeah, or... it's kind of like it's box, but then at the same time, it's it's almost like a crop of an apple inside. But then mm. at the same time, it kind of makes the J and the L. I just have to be aware of time so I don't end up like. <laughs> It is a difficult ball. thing. Yeah, it is a difficult thing doing, yeah, doing the yeah. live stream because live stream because you're like, like oh, actual time limit. Mm -mm, exactly. You're like, how do I make this? Sometimes I'm like, you see it, but it looks. I guess it is tricky too when you draw something because you have that freehand motion of having something quite um, uh, irregular, but then now you have mm. to put it digitally, and then all of a sudden, um, oh, what did I do? Oh, all of a sudden it's like, oh, actually, it's much harder to replicate digitally. So something, yeah, yeah. So that's just a, because uh, in this case, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Um, should I just do it like that first? Mm. Have know, you ever used a, like stylus, like a pen or Wacom or oh, anything I, like that? I use a Wacom usually for my illustration work just because the, it's easier to um, control. Mm. In, in like a drawing sense, but in, uh, I think I've just been so used to a mouse for my other general work, but I know a lot of designers that we've worked with and in general that use, like to use the Wacom or like a tablet yeah. um, function. Interesting, but at the same time, I see it more as a, maybe like a, a big large form artwork than a logo. Because I think it's something you also need to consider as in a logo is because logos have to work in different formats. So, for example, whether it's you know as a tiny social avatar mm. or something huge on a truck, so that right. you just need to consider the different applications for it. So usually we also test it. You know, if it's if it can be seen and recognizable at a tiny scale, then it also it would work. Whereas you look at this and I'm like, well, it doesn't really. So. I think there's quite a few people that joined us since the beginning, so I'll just kind of recap. We're here with Joy Lee, 
and um, where we've got our own kind of branding and design project, which combines Joy Lee's two loves, branding and design and Animal Crossing. Uh, and so we're, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> we're branding um, Joyland, which is Joy's um, Animal Crossing Island. Fun times. Yeah, it's awesome. This is when make your, <laughs> make your hobbies a reality or your, what am I saying? <laughs> Making your hobbies your work. All right. So this one, it's interesting because like, I know I have skills in, well, I know some sort of 3D in Illustrator. How do I create this? So I think I can, I'll create it with the shapes first because I usually just find the surface, that like front surface if I, it was to be done 2D and then to do that 2D first and then make it 3D. Anyway, so I'll just, I'll just do it and then explain it. <laughs> so I'm just going to make like a, I guess how I think about this is I draw a, a rectangle first. How is this arc made? I guess half circle. Chuck a rectangle on there. Um, use my pathfinder. Do you like that? Actually, no, I'll unmute that, that. Unmute that, that first just to see if I like the proportions. I'd probably do that. In white so I can actually see. Yeah, that's a bit big. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So Melody's saying, I like the staircase, the um, staircase with the J. Yeah, let us know, chat, like which direction, like is there something there, like... That yeah, you, you see know, that I don't see. Yeah, <laughs> you see that, that we're not maybe seeing, because we're talking a lot about that before, about our, like, mm. you know, our different experiences and different personalities, like well, we might see something. It's like you ever sat there and looked at clouds and you're like, hey, look, it looks like this. And someone's like, no, you're crazy. It looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. It's all like a the Rorschach time. test. Staring at clouds all, all day. Mm. It's not quite the proportions I want, but it's fine for the moment. Uh, staircase. Oh, actually, I thought of a good way to do the staircase just then. Draw a line. Um, again, I feel like design is interesting just because there are, isn't necessarily the right way to do something or the right way mm. to get to the end outcome. It's if you know how to do it and that's the way that it works for you, which is fine. There might be better ways and like that's just something you just got to learn. Um, but otherwise there's kind of no right way. Definitely. I mean, we have so many different designers and, and artists on Behance, um, showing their, showing their processes and it, it, mm. it really illustrates like how many different, like how many different ways you can really do things. Um, and everybody has a disclaimer. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. It's just the way that I do it and it works for me. Yeah, exactly. Everybody we have on, like, will say the same disclaimer. And it's because there are so many different ways um, to approach, like, you know, on the, you know, on the tools um, to get things done. I like to think about it like we like um, the apps are kind of like a workshop. You're in this garage mm -hmm. and there's just like all these tools and you're trying to do this one thing and you can actually use different combinations of the tools to achieve your goal. Um, yeah, no, exactly. Like, one way, I think. Yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. But it only comes to, I mean, I guess <laughs> that just comes to down to, so for example, there are certain like programs though. Like, so for example, you wouldn't use a wrench to, 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 to drill a hole. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, you don't know me well enough. Maybe I would try to do something like that. <laughs> Maybe, no, you can try, you can try, but if it will work for you, it's fine. But just saying, there's certain things. So, for example, Illustrator might be best for making vector solutions. Right, um, true. And InDesign is best for... Um, what's InDesign best for? Oh, layouts and mm. things that require, like, multi-page documents. What am I doing now? I'm just going to draw. Okay. I bet Festus was saying you could lean the J a little bit so it, like, so it might be a slide. <laughs> True. Slide. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh, hold on, hold on. I need to do that now, just because you said said it. <laughs> uh, Lean that J. 
Melody's saying, I can totally imagine the staircase rotating and animated. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that'd be so cool. But the good thing about also working at a studio too, and like with a lot of different people, is you get um, lots of different types of people with different abilities and mm. strengths. So think about like if you combine different strengths, it's all like, oh wow, power group. Someone knows how to animate, so they can mm. you know bring your what's you know flat and two D into life. Oh, there's something. There's still something odd about it, but look. I will refine it later, and who knows, next week you might see something way more polished, and you're like, Joy, you didn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I spent hours afterwards on it. <laughs> kind of perfect it. Okay, so we have that, but then how do I make, so to make a 3D, so in my mind I have an idea of. So some things obviously will take longer, just because you're like, okay, there's some legs in this, I want to spend a little bit more time, just because I can see it's becoming something. Um, if I go to, okay, hopefully this doesn't crash the computer. Uh, effect 3D, extrude and bevel. Um, okay, now you can see that, but then wireframe. Okay. Always like the wireframe look. Super... Yeah. Yes. I'm like, check oh, it out, I'm an architect. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then architects will scoff at us and be like, oh, yeah. there's no architect oh, yeah. there. That's part of the fun. Uh huh. All right. You have you ever tried have you tried dimension at all? Have you ever tried dimension? Oh, I tried it once, but I think my computer wasn't um, strong enough for that. Didn't but like I'm, it. yeah, it didn't like it. Well, that's just because you know you can only, your computer can only take a certain amount of CPU or graphics or whatever. But hopefully, getting a mm -hmm. much stronger computer soon so I can then go crazy. All right, so I have that. That's good. Usually I always just keep a copy of things on the side in case if I mess up or need it for later. That was that that was always my approach. Um, and then you you look back at like your your process like going through and you're like, oh, what was I thinking back here? And yeah, all this yeah. Stuff <laughs> off the art, all this stuff off the artboard. But you always want to have if you go too far down a particular path, you want to go wait. Okay, what? How did I end up down here? I need to go back to like this original thing. That I really liked because this direction isn't quite working, so I want to go in like a yeah, different, exactly. Different You're like, direction. oh, actually, I you know, moved something that I didn't really like. How do I go mm. back? And it's non-destructive design. Non-destructive. Hmm. And then sometimes you just forget because you just become like click happy, and then you're like, oh, I can't go back to where I wanted to go, and then <laughs> you just have to suck it up and either remake it redo or redo it. Redo it. <laughs> okay. I think that's alright for that. Okay, so how now I have to translate that. Like I can either trace it or I can do it another way. I can expand it. Object. Okay. Alright, I've expanded it. What do I do now? Ungroup. This is all live. Stroke. Okay. So you expanded Let's it then. Something. Expanded it? Expanded it. Expand. I ex it. I ex oh, it looks weird. You know what I meant? Um, after the extra <laughs> bevel, because otherwise it kind of retains, like it, it, it retains, retains the essence of the. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now I just have to figure out. Look, this is all live, so I don't know what I'm doing half the time. So I just have to figure it out. Okay, so it's that, that. I think they make like multiple planes in there, so you have to. There you go. See the stairs, right? Nice. <laughs> I have to. You have to refine it later, but again, this is idea, idea. Why is Thick. Um, some people in chat are just talking about um, some some people that were using Dimension. Yeah, it was Alex Lazarus that was mm -hmm. doing some of that stuff and he was doing some pretty amazing type work. So if you are interested oh. in 3D, because having a bit of a chat about 3D now, um, check him out. He's very talented. Mm. Oh, yeah, and now, yeah, chat, Carol, Carol just mentioned, yeah, it was Alex Lazarus. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out how this works. Oh, it looks kind of weird. Is that weird? There's something weird about it. Why is it doing that? That's fine, like, I was doing this previously. I don't know why. I just want a thicker edge. I mean, I just have to... It's really funny with these pathfinders. It's like I can't memorize what they actually do. I have to just randomly click to see 
Yeah. <laughs> like what they do, you're like, okay, yes, I know, you know. Oh, yeah, not that and one. Then, uh, this doesn't one. work. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, did that work? Like, okay, maybe. Hmm. Oh, that worked. <laughs> There we go. There we go. See, just we'll smash, the key, you. smash the keyboard, click a bunch of things, yeah. And, yeah. and it'll work eventually. Exactly. Well, there you go. You got yeah. some stairs. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, how do I, I have to do this one? Now expand. This one might be a bit trickier in terms of all the different like bits. So the keyboard grouping and it's then. It's like a skate ramp to me. <laughs> these stairs going up to a really scary drop. Well, yeah, funny you say that. Well, actually, no, I do not have a skate ramp in my um, island, but I do have a playground. Ooh. So, it's quite playground-y yeah, as well. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I would yeah. put my kid on that slide, but it looks pretty dangerous. But, you know, <laughs> some more adventurous Look, it's parents called... might. <laughs> That's why it's called Joyland. Joyland. <laughs> Would it be a joy ride? It might, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a joy ride. Oh, okay. Look, it's happening. It's happening. I'm just trying to figure out now all these bits. Perspective is not my friend. Sometimes cut. Mm. I'm just using the cut tool just to cut these different lines, so I can actually. Nope, that's not what I want. Cut. Like, I can just imagine sometimes, I'm like, if I was the viewer, you probably, like, some of the people are, like, will be screaming at me, be like, just do, do it that way, do it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be hard with, um, yeah, 770, um, what, hovering art directors over the top. Oh, my gosh, the 700, oh, great, great. <laughs> it's hard enough. Sorry, with, like, no pressure. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> Okay, it's still doing that weird thing. All right, let's just go to Pathfinder and Unite. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, no. Well, actually, hold on a second. That just that, that weird one just then. That might be interesting just because I need that for later. Mm. To be like a shadow or something. I Joy's saying it's an extreme slide exclusive to Joyland. Yes, <laughs> yes. Live hard. Um, that one worked before. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really digging those stairs. Yeah, the stairs look great. Oh, okay, that worked. If I... What? Did... Okay, that's, tri that's tripping me out. I mean, I guess... Look, that will do for now. <laughs> I think in like later on, I'd either cut these individually out into lines and then form them up. Mm. This is just for like the ease of doing this at the moment. Okay, so you can see these weird jutting lines. I'm gonna take the corners yeah, out so it doesn't yeah, do that. Rounded, rounded corners. Okay, it's I think one too thick. All right, that's good. Chuck that in there for the moment just to have a look, and then bring this up. How are we for time? Let's just be so we got aware. 18 minutes left, believe it or not. Okay, yes. okay. Yes, I think that's alright. So now I'll, just, I'll speed through this one first, because I think there's legs in this one. I, I, there's legs. Um, let's paste that in. Okay. Is that way to, is there, no, wait a minute, it's not supposed to be black there. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what's the dark part. Okay. That's cool. There's something in that. Because imagine, I can just imagine this in a word mark and like potentially mm. or like the different layers changing out and then we can make a dynamic system. And I'll, I mean, I'll probably in my own time make other letters like the O and the Y and then the N. That'd be cool. I think you could do some point. really cool fun stuff. Like you could make the stairs like like almost like an escalator, like with a really simple like animation as well. You could have yeah, like, that'd be have cool. It, like set in situ in the space with your with the actual characters in the village around it as well. Like there's yeah. a lot that you could do with that. Yeah. Oh, 
Ideas! Very good. Okay. I'm excited now. Hold on, make sure I save this in case. Make sure you save your files, guys. <laughs> like, the worst is when you're like halfway done something really good and then it crashes and you just realize it didn't auto save. Alright, I'm gonna move on to this one. Like, this is more of a simple mark, but I think it's just a nice way of communicating apples and the J and the L. And for those that weren't here at the beginning, the apples oh, yes. relate to, in, in relation my to island. Joyland, it's your native fruit. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And if my, I don't play Animal Crossing, but my understanding is that like when you get your island, there there is a particular like random native fruit that you have and you can't, it kind of, it's quite an important thing, like whatever you have, right? Is that how it works? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't know how important it is actually. It's, not just, it's just it's your just native. <laughs> it's just it's just your native for. I hear people um, talking about they're like, hey, yo, I've got like apples over here, and they want visitors to come. Want to trade? trade? They trade. <laughs> is that the thing? Yeah, yeah. So usually in your own on your own island, um, the native fruit costs. As in, when you sell your fruit, it costs less mm. than if it was like an exotic fruit. Uh, okay. I was putting that together. So, actually, I probably should make half and then I'll duplicate it. So, why it looks weird is just because the curves don't match. Maybe I'll cut the half at the top. I wish I knew like all the shortcuts that existed. Mm -hmm. Because some people just work super duper fast. Okay, so right now the proportions aren't right, but I got the general look that I want. What if it's made this a bit smaller? The flat. Okay, so the weird part now is that middle bit. I like that middle bit. Maybe if I just condense it in. Oh yeah, mm. kind of looks like an apple. That looks like a JML. Again, like how we normally do this at work is probably we'll, we'll end up having something we like, but then we'll do a bajillion different variations to them to then like determine which one we actually like. So sometimes we're like, oh, actually the proportions might not be right on the top here. I'd smush it down by like ten percent. Until I feel, until we find um, something we like, and then we, and again, we normally just print these out as well, so we see them in person. So you'll physically print them out, put them up on the wall. Yeah, we'll physically that, print them out. Yep, thing. put them yeah. on a wall, and then we'll be like, you know, doing the classic hand on chin and oh, yeah. hmm, mm. which one, <laughs> and mark it up. Um, Why do you think that it's useful to to print? to print them out, to print out something like this and put it on the wall and, and stand back and like, what's the value in that? Why can't you just look at it on the screen? Um, I think, well, the, there's multiple different reasons. So um, when you print it out, it's something physical. Like if it's going to be, if it's going to be shown physically into the world, it's just good practice to actually print it out so you can actually see, oh, this is going to be mm. what it looks like at this particular size. So you also do like worst case scenarios. So say for example, I like this one, but we need to compare all of them at different sizes. Um, so sometimes it might just be functional. Um, so say for example, this top bit closes up if it shrinks at this size and we need to have um, this logo work at this size because um, it, it's an inst this is how big it is on Instagram and you mm -hmm. still need it to be recognizable. So sometimes it's because of that and we're like, well, even though we like it at this size, generally we might have to open that bit up a little bit just because when it's seen at such a small size, it might not be um, ideal. Mm. Cool. I think I was going to do something with the whole... Oh, also, again, like in terms of why I'm designing in black at the moment is um, I can... Not a really big deal for me at the moment because I can choose the colors later. And usually all logos need to work in black and white. Mm. 
When you present a logo to a client, will you always mm -hmm. present it like in its final version with the colors chosen and all that sort of thing? Or do you ever present a logo or word mark in black and white and then do color? What's the... Um, it, def it depends if the concept requires a color or not. So sometimes mm -hmm. um, certain concepts require the color or if, for example, the client already has an existing brand um, and um, you know, they'd like to see that particular blue on their logo and then you have yeah. to design based on their specifications. So it's good to obviously show them if you've already thought of that earlier. So it depends on the process as well with the client. Mm. Um, cause it might be the fact that, oh, they know it's going to already be in blue, but they, they're more concerned about how it's going to look as a, a form or a, a word mark or, uh, whatever to begin with, you can, we can show them in stages and yeah, it's different with, um, that. So design process can be, um, different for different clients. Yeah. So there's no like one set way. It's whatever's best and how we can also sell our own idea to them. Yeah. So if, for example, like, I mean, I this is just a quick example, like, oh, if there's something that we really love about this particular idea, but, um, to, to get it across first and to like make them fall in love with that symbol, we might show them in a particular way and then later on bring the color in or, or that. Yeah. So it's just strategic point of view. Okay. Mm. All right. I'm just conscious of time, 10 minutes. So we'll move on to, I mean, I think I'm pretty happy with these actually. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I'd be interested to hear what chat thinks as well. Um, have a quick look yeah. and, and, and let us know. I'm totally yeah. vibing the stairs. There's something about the, the line weight. There's something just, um, yeah, there's something and the fun and aspect yeah, yeah, yeah. the stairs for me yeah. personally. And it's more dynamic as well. Yeah. There's something, yeah, it's not just like a static um, symbol, but the static symbol, again, it's fine. It just depends on if that's what you're trying to go for. Okay, I'm just going to have another artboard. So I found a few typefaces just to show everyone. These are all Adobe fonts, which is great. If you have Creative Cloud, you can access any of these without purchasing them just because they come into in in the adobe fonts options there are a lot of fonts to choose from these days there's so many <laughs> there's so many there's so many uh okay i already have i already in my mind had an idea for this one so let me just drag that over i think this would be nice with as we can contrast it but then at the same time i'm thinking make it more like playful let me see what's to try new house grotesque um, or, oh, this is when you get into font land and you can spend years in this land. Right. <laughs> I'll take these two serifs. I mean, not serifs, sans serifs. I don't want to say anything wrong. Hmm. Oh. Um, actually, there's this interesting one I actually want to bring up because I just remembered. So there's this, there's new things for like variable fonts nowadays where designers have designed fonts that have different variable widths and um size widths and thicknesses so this one's a variable font and then if you look at it there's so many so many different options but mm. adobe has created a way which you can uh decipher the weight and the width and the slant based on the slider so you're like oh actually oh. i kind of want it to be like super chunky yeah. <laughs> and then the width I actually want it to be a more of an expanded font. And then if you want a bit of a slant, there's a slant. And then then it can tell you that's a custom variable font. And that's actually interesting because it's like, well, it's cut now it's now customized to your um, preferences and it's a custom font <laughs> without mm. the custom fees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just make that a little bit bigger. Track that out. Again, we spent ages and ages on like sizings and um oh it's a, sorry it's a bit of a lag uh sizings and kerning and tracking so you spend a lot of time there it's funny we've given you you've got like eight minutes <laughs> i know i'm like kind of <laughs> stress make and i had something else planned too but maybe we'll do that next time we've got next um, week yeah so we'll let everybody know week, as well uh, again if you because i spent a lot of time again. this yeah i spent a lot of time earlier on talking about 
meme culture pretty much <laughs> <laughs> True. and branding branding True. and memes um, so we will be back here next week with with part two of joyland yes um of joyland, where we put this in action um, it yeah. will be enjoyable <laughs> all that um <laughs> you natural... actually said enjoyable twice um oh. when you were talking about stuff before um <laughs> which i was like yeah it's... You're living, you are living your brand. I am, You're I'm the, living the Joe my brand. Exotic, Joe Exotic of the design world. Oh, I don't know if that's like a compliment. <laughs> it's meant like to be I, a compliment, but yeah. Okay, okay. that's um, entirely <laughs> not. I'm doing it with like. <laughs> Relating Look, back Netflix to like living your brand. Look, Netflix hit me up for a. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we asked chat before, like which was vi what they were vibing with. Uh, Festus uh -huh. was like yeah. Jane Steps for sure. Versus awesome. we are often on the same page. Um, Steve also said the font in the fourth column with the low descender on the cap J is very cool. I totally missed that. Um, oh. Elizabeth was saying, uh, what if the J and stairs were connected in the middle? That's an interesting, that's an what interesting connected? idea oh, as well. Yeah, they could be okay, okay. Could, oh, that's like cool. It's like a kind of isometric kind of thing. That's really yeah. cool. Oh, Bill Harp is next with I impossible isometric. <laughs> Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, that's exactly right. Not... Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, yeah. that's a really interesting thing. I might do that for like a static logo, but then this one. I'm just going to go through it quick to see if it's got potential. So this is why you have to make sure you have copies of things just because you're like, oh, now I need to get that, but I lost the J. Right. Mm -hmm. R&B was saying you could set the letters down the stairs. That's quite interesting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good one too. And it's quite cool. Now I'm like, oh, this is three design. I'm like under pressure. It feels like one of those reality TV shows where you're just under the pump. Oh yeah. <laughs> get like, it done. I get need, it like, done. Think, Doesn't matter. Thinking music or like that final music. Yeah. Doom, doom, okay. doom, 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 doom. Um, it's not helping, plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely going down like a really fun kind of vibe. Oh like yeah, very for fun, sure. Very playful for sure. kind of direction. I think I'll just create an O at the moment because I've got now four, four, four and a half minutes. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. What can I do with the O? Maybe I'll just do like a, I can do like a, hmm. Maybe, uh, actually I'll do a, a hypnotic one. So Let's do this. So I have to select both my circles. Oh, no, blend tool, blend options. How many steps? Four? No, I'll do five. Let's see what that looks like. Object. Blend. Thing. Whoa. Object. It's hypnotic. Look, the island may, may not be ruled by one leader who is... <laughs> <laughs> Cold vibes, so. <laughs> have not indoctrinated my villages. Oh yeah, there's something there, there's something there. Like, it might not be the right typeface at the moment, but mm. you can see the idea. Okay, I like that. Alright, let me bring my other one up. This one. Which one was the one that they said there was a step in the... Um, in the comment you mentioned before, in passing, about a step it. in yeah, the... Um, fourth column. Uh, fourth column. One, two, three, oh, column, one, two, three, four. Yes? Yeah. The drop J. The drop J. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't notice that when I put that up there. That's interesting. Did they say that looks like a slide, or was that just me in my mind? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's cool. I can also drop the J's and stuff. Not quite right. Okay, two minutes. So I will take you through some quick brand assets that I've uh, concocted earlier. So we can go with this. I mean, I'll refine it probably for next week just so it's not as messy. Um, but I don't know, I'm really happy with these actually. Yeah. Like I said, I'm loving, yeah. loving the stairs and um, the ones, yeah, the ones too. to the like, right, like the abstract, right. there's definitely something in there for sure. Like there's the, something the in there. Opening. Yeah. Yeah. You could, yeah. You could expand that out yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. Um, I have moved. <laughs> so how these will be probably made because it's, again, it's an interesting brief. It's just my own brief. So it's kind mm. of like oh, whatever I say goes. <laughs> Um, I can put the logo territories. Actually, I just copy and paste them in. Oh, no, I'm just starting tomorrow. <laughs> next week's stuff. <laughs> that was a little sneak uh, peek at next week. A little sneak peek. Yeah. A little bit. Well, I could have done it today, but I ran out of time. All right. So we like this. That's option one. And then, where was I? Illustrator. Number two. All right. Something in there, something in that. All right, so I've already started with colors a little bit right now because I wanted a diverse neighborhood full of different people. So I got the colors kind of from my neighbors, like the colors of my neighbors. Nice. And then I went like above and beyond as usual to make <laughs> illustrations of my oh, wow. neighbors These and my, cool. my, my, my animal crossing uh, family. <laughs> so these can be used as brand assets later when I create all these different things, like I can make postcards, I can make business cards, I can make flags, I can do, oh, so many things. I'm so these excited awesome. for it. But just imagine like putting them all together. And also, I guess I can also come up with like a brand language as well. Yeah. To put that all together. Oh, perfect. They got 30 seconds left on the clock. Look at that. Amazing, I do it. Amazing okay. time. We've got a minute to kind of recap, so it's okay. We won't yeah, get, don't get that out straight away. Um, oh, okay, good, good, good. But yeah, this, this, has, been, this has been great. Um, let's, um, bring us up. There we are. Um, but yeah, it's been fantastic. We've gone through a lot in a very short amount of time. Oh, so much, but that went so quick. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It always yeah. does. Um, and it, which is great because we have a part two. So we're going to be back at the same time next mm -hmm. week. Um, and going into, to applications, going to continue in Joyland. Um, which is a really, this has been a really fun stream. I've had a great time. I love the brief. Um, this has been super cool. Uh, thank you everyone in chat for the, for the great questions and, and participation and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, it's been really enjoyable. Enjoyable. Oh, I did it. Oh, enjoyable. Uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Joy. It's been great. All right. Thank you for having me. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. Part two. All right. And uh, also yeah. stick around, everybody. We'll be back in half an hour with Bill Hope, amazing illustrator. We're doing some impossible isometric illustrations. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, a bit of animation, maybe even a little bit of sound stuff as well. I need to so collab with Bill now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The stairs <laughs> involved. Um, yes. So I hope you'll stick around and we'll see you in about half an hour. Thank you so much, Joy, and thank you, chat. All right. Thank you so much, everyone.